what we're going to do next is that we want to introduce you to a number of the global competition entries that were submitted to our World Heritage Initiative. And I think that Doc is going to be helping me with the sharing of this uh, part, right, Doc? Yes. Okay, do you want me to introduce the first one then? Yes, you, why don't you go do the first one, I do the second one. Okay, the uh, colonnade at the Prince Battlefield uh, State Park in the United States is the first uh, finalist. And that's uh, augmented reality performances at World Heritage Sites. In the meantime, just to mention that for the global competition, we had about 36 entries and uh, Merli Guerra is one of the entries and we are very nice, very happy to welcome you in the webinar and very interesting to listen to your uh, proposal. Well, thank you for having me. You know, it's it's exciting to return back to this, especially because my project is actually launching a week from Monday now. So, oh wow, excellent! excellent. <laughs> yeah, so this is perfect. And uh, all right, so oh, just a all second. Right. Yeah, I, sorry, I, I, we're just transitioning from Daniel to me. Apologies, I've uh, just trying to share my screen here. That's fine. Yes, actually, Daniel is going to get his COVID vaccine second shot now, so he, he is completely excused. Thank you, Mario. <laughs> and we are all jealous, <laughs> especially from Canada. Well, while this is being pulled up, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone, um, especially to Michelle, Mario, Doug, and our world heritage for inviting me to discuss my current work with historical sites that integrates history and the performing arts as a platform essentially for cultural community engagement. Looks like we're just about ready. So again, thank you so much for having me. This is indeed just a, a real passion of mine combining history and the performing arts so i'm very excited for this opportunity to be re-engaged um especially at a time of day where i'm actually awake the last one that i was a part of i was in the middle of the night trying to tune in so this is wonderful thank you for the options of different times um just a little bit of background on who i am i i definitely likewise come to this community not so much from the it side of things but more from the performing arts um, I'm co-founder and artistic director of Luminarium Dance Company that's based in Boston, Mass in the USA, but also in Princeton, New Jersey. We now have a satellite company and we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We do a lot of uh, professional commissions for things as large as uh, TED events where we'll open for the event, but we also do community art walks and gardens. Um, and we've been doing this for the last 11 years now. So we just hit that milestone the other day. Um, I am a professional dancer in ballet, modern and believe it or not, from my Italian Portuguese name, uh, classical Indian dance. <laughs> I'm a professional in that field and I've actually toured and performed with different companies over the years in Japan um, and several times in India. My choreographic works and screen dance films and art installations have been shown across the US, but actually also in Argentina, Canada, Germany, Indonesia, Italy, Portugal, and Spain. And beyond choreography, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, so that's obviously playing into the technology side of my interests as well. And so my passion for site-specific work has been going on for a really long time. I was lucky to be awarded a, um, a recipient of the gold star through Massachusetts Cultural Council back in 2015, specifically for this work. And recently I was speaking on this topic for the National Dance Education Organization as well. So it's something that really is important to me. Um, so when I initially saw the call for uh, ways to engage the community with technology and specifically relating to heritage, I immediately jumped on it, knowing that probably I wasn't going to receive it since I'm mostly in the arts, but because the work that I'm doing right now does interact with these three different modes of technology, history, and dance. My interest and my expertise in the artistic celebration of historic landmarks stems from my decade of work as an historical interpreter 
Um, for any of you who are familiar with the book Little Women, I actually worked there for a decade, um, and also the Paul Revere House in Boston. And then over the decade that followed after that, so this has been 20 years now, but after that, for that second decade, I started to expand upon that work, um, bringing it into my dance company's repertoire. And I started to pre uh, pair those two backgrounds in order to start to ask, you know, what purposes did a space serve? Um, what joys did this site witness? What tragedies? And trying to engage the public with these historic sites in a very different way, a very kinetic way. And so through that process, I began an annual cultural community outreach program that I do every single year. I go to a different historic site and I create a specific event just for that site. And so we've had some really uh, diverse situations. Um, one year we actually created um, a self-published storybook that integrated writers who were professionals in their fields up to age 80. And then you had children who were involving the artwork and then our dance company and it all went oh. into this book. Um, and then we also, on totally polar opposite side of things, went to a water tower and projected 60 foot tall projections onto this water tower and involved 300 members of the local community into a kinetic performance that was happening at this very important landmark to that town. So these are the kinds of projects that intrigue me. Next slide, please. So for the purposes of, oh, no, you were right with the previous one. Thank you. So for the purposes of this particular project um, that I had originally proposed to our world heritage, I'm working with the colonnade that you see here. And this beautiful, beautiful piece of what looks like a Grecian ruin is kind of strewn in the middle of a giant empty field in Princeton, New Jersey. And it's now bisected by a busy road. And most of the locals know of it, but know nothing about it. And as I've been chatting with these locals and saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm paying respect and homage to not only the battle that took place here during the Revolutionary War, but of course, to the soldiers that are buried right behind the colonnade. Every single one of them has said, what soldiers that are buried behind the colonnade? Um, so it's really been fascinating to me how little is known about this really beautiful ruin that's here at the space. And so just to give a very brief history on it, it actually originated in Philadelphia, um, not in Princeton, New Jersey. And it was built by Thomas Eustick Walter, who was the fourth architect on the US Capitol back in 1835. So it has great significance in that aspect. And that's why it was saved over the years. Um, eventually it became a Sons of St. George Hall. And then that hall was eventually demolished at the turn of the century. So in 1901, these four columns had survived the demolition and they were actually put onto canal boats, which is something that through my research this past year and a half, we were able to find an old newspaper clipping um, that actually did finally answer our question. They were put onto canal boats and sent up the Delaware and Raritan Canal and were um, placed as a part of a new mansion being built in Princeton called Mercer Manor. And unfortunately, that space then had a fire in the 1950s. And at that point, it was donated across the street to the Princeton battlefield, where uh, the Battle of Princeton back in 1777 was actually a major turning point um, for the Americans um, towards gaining momentum with Washington's army. And so there's just so much history that is embedded in these beautiful, beautiful columns. And I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with stone tape theory, but it's something that's come up a lot for me recently in my, my studies and my research, especially in regards to film and sensory ethnography. And essentially there's the concept that stones can record time and even be played back. And this is a site where when I stand there and with every historical site that I stand at, I always feel that need to touch, to feel connected to the site and try to play back these memories. So next slide, please. Thank you so much. 
So this is what spearheaded my most recent project, which is called the Time Traveler's Lens. And it is launching in a week and it is available for viewing worldwide. So I encourage you to partake. It's a very participatory event. Um, it combines history, technology, and dance and uses 360 degree videography to create an interdisciplinary immersive extended reality performance experience for viewers. And originally I actually created it so that it would be an augmented reality experience specifically for viewers that are going to the grounds so that they can essentially hold up their phones tap on their screen and then they can look all around them and see a site specific dance unfolding around them. And this is something that obviously is <laughs> perfectly timed, not intentionally, to be honest, because I started this project so long ago, um, but it, it times very well with COVID, COVID safety because performance has been absolutely devastated by this. And I'm by no means saying that a recorded piece of dance can replace live performance, it can't. But at the same time, what this offers is an opportunity for folks to come to the battlefield any time of day, whenever is convenient for them and have a very immersive and intimate experience on the field where they can smell everything, touch everything, and yet see the performers around them. And then on the other hand, uh, I debated it for a while and eventually we decided to expand the project to be virtual reality as well. So that's why for all of you else, elsewhere around the world, you'll be able to tune in as well to see this piece. So if you can go to the final slide, please, thank you. So yeah, so honestly, earlier, Doug, when you were talking about augmented and mixed reality, I got so excited because I thought, yes, this is exactly um, the kind of work that I'm working with right now. And it, the collaborative possibilities of working interdisciplinarily between history, technology, and the arts is particularly rich at this moment. And the Time Traveler's Lens is launching very soon. And so I'm at the point where I am looking for what my next World Heritage Site is going to be. And I'm open to both local and abroad. So I wanted to just bring up the idea that this is something that can be taken to all sorts of sites and to offer people an opportunity to either go to a site and see a performance unfolding around them specific to that community and that cultural heritage location, or to allow people who are overseas and can't make it there to be able to experience it in their own homes. So it is a very uh, intriguing new precipice that we're on with this merging of technology and dance, but please reach out if you're at all interested because I'd love to keep the conversation going and keep this work intact. Thank you, Merli. Very interesting project. Uh, I'm going to check your website immediately. After Great, thank you. <laughs> so, thank you so much. So, let's go to our next uh, presentation. And this presentation will be given by uh, Professor Andres Gaviria Valenzuela from the Pontifica University in Bogota, Colombia. And Andres is going to be talking about Santa Cruz de Montpot Historic District. So, while we're looking for the for uh, Andres slides. Just let me remind you there is still opportunities to book some time with our experts. If you scroll up on the on the chat box, you will find the link. And also, please remember for those of you who are joining a breakup room, just to put your name before the breakup room. So, Andres, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me to present uh, the project from my team's proposal that was submitted to the global competition at the Globinar today. It's a great honor to be here. The following our World Heritage Information Technology Global Competition submission was inspired on an ongoing academic research project developed at the School of Architecture and Design at Javeriana University in Bogota, Colombia, named Historic District and Territory Momposino Cultural Ecosystem. Having as a starting point a declared World Heritage Site, the historic center of Santa Cruz de Mompox, 
the project encourages the adoption of a landscape and territorial perspective for the study and conservation of cultural heritage, especially the built one within its larger geographical context. It contemplates the search for the restoration of balance in the social and environmental relationships in the territory, the identification and assessments of their cultural meaning and proposals for planning processes for its sustainability. It aims to articulate heritage and its environment in order to assess the cultural significance of Mompox as a basis for planning processes and within the framework of several theoretical fields of reference, structure in a systemic approach and from the paradigm of sustainability. Next slide, please. The proposed objectives of the project seek to assess the Momposino region by detecting natural and cultural resources with meaning for both individual and communities and the recognition of places that preserve memory and anchor traditions. Likewise, they also seek the identification of cultural practices and the ways these have transformed the environment to the point of characterizing the forms of interaction between the historic center and the territory, concluding with the formulation of actions for the management of a proposed Momposino cultural ecosystem. It should be noted that the projector approach is a structure from a reference framework constituted by conceptualizations around the notions of assessment, protection and heritage management, cultural anthropology and cultural ecosystem. Similarly, it establishes arguments about sustainability, regional studies and planning, in addition to the concepts of region and territory. Next slide, please. In methodological terms, the proposed approach is developed from procedures and techniques, both qualitative and quantitative, including bibliographic and cartographic reviews and a description of socio-geographic systems. On the other hand, it requires the elaboration of thematic cartographics, cartographies and analytical models, explanatory and synthetic, with planimetric displays, mapping of physical footprints and transect routes. Finally, the method interprets the results of interviews with the above mentioned heritage actors and makes recommendations that can serve as a basis for the elaboration of municipal and regional development plans. Next slide, please. The ongoing research project may obtain significant support for its further development participating in this, our World Heritage Initiative. The results so far show a review of the overlapping and diverse visions of regional delimitations, and most significantly, the proposal for the consideration of a potential Momposino cultural ecosystem closely related to the UNESCO categories of mixed sites and cultural landscapes. Next slide, please. In response to the question about how can your specific project example also be applied generally to other World Heritage sites, here follow our answer. Having as a starting point, the historic center of Santa Cruz de Monpox as a World Heritage site, we believe it's viable to define and establish a related cultural ecosystem promoting integral territorial scale preservation. This by means of a methodological approach of inquiring within various key regional community leaders, ancestral inhabitants in the territory about routes and sources of supplies and their further destination for the generation of various types of heritage resources, both tangible and intangible, 
and then mapping such routes and territories in order to configure and promote a cultural landscape of world significance. Thank you very much for your attention. Muchas gracias, Andrés. Thank you so much for your contribution to the to the competition and this entry. Uh, looks really nice to to visit uh, uh, Santa Cruz de Monpox. So uh, at this opportunity, let's go to Ecuador now. So we have um, the presentation of El Sagrado, the old cathedral church located in in Ecuador, in Cuenca. And for this presentation, we have Claudia Ortiz, who is going to be presenting on behalf of the team. Thank you so much for the presentation, Mario. Let me begin to, to our project. It's an honor to be here with all of you. El Sagrario Church is one of the oldest buildings in city Cuenca, Ecuador. This building was built uh, in the mid 16th century, like the city's cathedral. At present, it plays a leading role around cultural and tourist activity, like a museum of religious art, also like a concert hall. Uh, the state of this conservation is good. However, there is, um, sorry, there is, a, a visible damage and a potential risk uh, that could be generation of this damage. Please, the next slide. Thank you. There is no manuals, technical guides, regulations that may guide the intervention and the process um, of risk prevention. There is also a lack of viable research and a proposal that could provide solutions and conservation practices through compatible materials or versatile interventions that, might, that may mitigate the consequence of seismic events, aggravate environment pollutions and traffic vibrations. As you can see in the picture of the right, we saw some points that are with a little of damage of this building. The next slide, please. Thank you. This imminent hazard motivates the creation of a monitoring system that is in real time, that must be structured by a network of wireless with non-invasive sensors. In addition, software and hardware are open source. The system We'll have environmental sensors like temperature, humidity, light, noise, and CO2 emissions. Also, it has a triaxial accelerometer that will register the displacement of the structure, allowing to determine the vulnerability of this building. We can see here the location of some of these uh, sensors that will re register all this information in real time. Please help me with the next slide. Thank you. This relevant project is a case of study that seeks to highlight conservation measures for El Sagrario Church, analyzing its critical condition and also applying a monitoring technology through a proposal, IoT infrastructure. As a result of this proposal, will be the first local, maybe the first national here in Ecuador, environmental and structural monitoring system to provide real time data. It is a milestone whose replication is necessary and achievable under expected technology conditions. We can replay this study in 18 buildings that is located in historic center of Cuenca. We have here some pictures of these, of these buildings where we can replace this uh, study 
also we can reply in 22 rural parishes. Thank you so much for this presentation. Muchas gracias, Claudia and Maria del Cisne for this uh, presentation. Um, this, uh, this is a very promising actually project. I, I had the opportunity to be in Cuenca and this is a wonderful building and I'm very grateful that you are developing this uh, proposal. Great, so I'm going to pass the floor to, to Doc, who's going to be introducing the next two teams. Okay, um, I think the best thing for me would be to introduce Scott Purdy, who I see is online. Uh, yeah, there he is, I see his hand waving. And maybe Scott, if you wanna introduce the name of your project so that I don't get it uh, or I don't mispronounce it. Most certainly, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thanks so much. Um, I just want to say I'm so completely honored to have been a, uh, to be a finalist here at Our World Heritage. Um, I'm the director of operations at the ARC project and am presenting on behalf of our uh, 501c3, as well as uh, ARDIV, our nonprofit partner in the competition. Um, we happen to be collaborating together to combine our technical expertise in order to combat illicit trade in Syria, uh, specifically the Marat al Numan Museum near the Dead Cities region in the northwest of the country. Uh, next slide, please. With ARC Project's focus on photogrammetric capture and training in hard hit areas, and ARDA's robust database being used by law enforcement and auction houses to combat the global theft of cultural heritage, we're hoping to bring some of our unique skills to the Levant region to practice and pass along 3D capture know-how to local Syrians, um, to provide museum quality archiving techniques and resources to them, and to offer an innovative platform for their heritage to be protected against possible future looting via uh, a database that can rapidly disseminate details regarding stolen objects to authorities around the world. Uh, next slide, if you will. So we'll be working on the ground with Syrian volunteers aligned with Day After and under the supervision of Dr. Amar al-Azim, a professor uh, at Shawnee University and former antiquities director at GDAM in Damascus. Uh, our project has already done a number of capture tests uh, with the team and, at the museum and the surrounding Dead Cities area. Uh, the Marat al-Numan uh, has been bombed several times throughout the Civil War and access is uh, very contingent upon unfolding events. But nonetheless, even under these challenging circumstances, we've, pr we've proven that the skills of photogrammetry can be taught remotely and photo data can successfully be transferred, processed, and then displayed back to the Syrian team for further consultation, um, round tripping of data, that sort of thing. Uh, since many of the beautiful mosaics at the museum originated from the Dead Cities area, we plan to direct on the ground, the on the ground team to also capture many of the buildings and complexes within uh, this heritage, UNESCO heritage site. Uh, next slide. So both Artiv and then Art Project believe strongly in the de democratization of the technology um, by always looking to maintain that the tech is being used uh, by the team uh, and uh, is always accessible and expensive and as easy to use as possible. Uh, we realized that if uh, DSLR cameras or LiDAR aren't possible, then cell phone data capture, uh, capture um, if used correctly, can still offer quite a high degree of photogrammetric capture. Likewise, with power often intermittent in the area, the TDA team has means to store data on thumb drives uh, for transport out of Syria. And so regardless of the circumstances, we still hope to attempt to use the best capture techniques possible, including drones if training and access permits. Um, we've tested our heritage model, um, not only uh, in Venezuela, but Canada and, and all throughout the US to great effect. So uh, we believe that our efforts in Syria will be successful. Uh, next slide, please. Artiv and ARC have worked together to integrate their Con our content management systems in such a way to ensure the quick registration of objects into Artiv's database. Should any of the items captured be subsequently stolen, we can have these registered objects immediately flagged, thus putting the word out to agencies that are best positioned to stop the transport and sale of the pieces internationally. It's our goal through this synergistic collaboration that we can not only preserve Syrian heritage, but provide a template for other cultural heritage organizations to do similar work in areas exposed to looting and damage. 
Uh, so now I'd like to show you uh, some of the work we've done to, compass, uh, to combat illicit trade through a video that we've put together. The ARC Project, a nonprofit 501c3 organization, is devoted to digitally archiving cultural heritage at every scale from the intensely personal to the monumental, but focuses on a new paradigm by which we empower communities to digitally preserve their own cultural identity based on their own values and beliefs, instead of those imposed upon them from outside. We at ARC Project believe that we can all play a vitally important role in preserving heritage and actively promote, teach, and share our expertise in accessible, 3D digital documentation methods, which empower not just academics and established institutions, but also volunteer citizen scientists, community heritage organizations, and indigenous communities to document and archive their own cultural heritage in new and powerful ways, with the added benefit of making heritage more easily and richly experienced by all. Some objects which our volunteer photographers capture may have since been lost, destroyed, vandalized, or stolen. But the digital archive allows for the possibility of the symbolic importance and cultural narrative to survive beyond the life of the object or artifact in question. And in some cases, the digital 3D archive may even enable the repatriation of data necessary for the physical repair and or reconstruction of otherwise lost artifacts. Having already proven the validity and scalability of 3D scanning protocols and practices, ARC is now most anxious to assist in developing these very same tools to aid in the fight against heritage theft and trafficking. We are working hard to bolster our connections to like-minded groups and law enforcement authorities and hope to innovate next generation inter-organizational data exchange for rapid dissemination of heritage data to enforcement agencies in the field, as well as end of line sellers of art objects. We believe illicit trafficking can be dramatically reduced by creating a deeper, more interconnected data pipeline at every stage of an artifact's life and welcome future conversations with groups engaging in progressive thinking on the topic. The ARC project is at a point in its evolution such that the technology and the way we are applying it have coalesced, and we are ready to utilize these now mature techniques in support of anti-trafficking initiatives in partnership with entities such as ARTIV, The Day After, The Athar Project, and Institute of Assets and Monuments Venezuela. We've honed the combined use of detailed 3D photogrammetric modeling, machine learning, and the quantitative power of crowdsourced data gathering to protect heritage and help mitigate the impacts of theft, destruction, or vandalization. Regardless of best intentions, no single group can accomplish this alone. The resources for any one group to stop trafficking simply do not exist and the loss of heritage through destruction is happening at a demoralizing rate. But better, more collaborative use of visual data, such as that generated by 3D archiving and documentation in open partnership, could turn the tide. Because the ARC project is attempting to be a think tank for the continuing sustainability and relevance of practical digital cultural heritage capture, we are constantly in the process of generating new models of sustainability. Due to its cross-sector nature, such a varied effort of building bridges across science, heritage, culture and technology takes resources, committed partners and long-term support. As a young organization, we continue to actively engage with new partners both established institutions and fellow nonprofits, to utilize revolutionary new technologies to pioneer new and better ways to combat the loss of cultural heritage everywhere, 
and help us document our collective histories before they are compromised, rather than forensically, after the unthinkable has already occurred. Thank you all. Okay, well, thank you, Scott. That was excellent. And uh, impressed on <laughs> that video actually played really well, uh, given the massive audience, but fantastic work. Okay, I'm gonna pass over to Mario to introduce our next uh, project. Thank you, Doc. So our next and last project for session four will be presented by Brahim Shan. And this is digital preservation and interpretive education in West Africa. So the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I'm very happy to be here and uh, have the possibility to present to present our project. So the first, uh, I have to say that my English is not so good, but I will try to, to make a presentation in English. So we are working about um, Kutamaku, Kutamaku, the land of uh, the Batama River. And you can see on the picture, the first picture, you can see that uh, this land have uh, a series of problems. It is going to be like uh, a modern uh, land, land because we are and we have a new construction from modern uh, architecture on this site. And uh, we don't have to lose uh, the, 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 the important element of this land, who is uh, Takienta. Takienta means like a house, a house, a cultural house. As you can see on the, the second picture, this house is, is, um, uh, is uh, have three, three uh, functions. The first is an habitation. The second is uh, uh, habitation of protection, and the the last is for for the is like a place of cultural cultural practice. So uh, the people uh, make all things in these houses, but unfortunately, these houses are going to disappear. So we decide to next slide, please. So. Uh, what we want to do about uh, our projects. We have a museum, eco, eco museum, and uh, the name is the museum is Tatasomba. So the name uh, Tatasomba means like these houses. So we are going to build all the type of these houses. The, and we are using, uh, we are making recording. So we have picture, we have a video, and we want to make a digital preservation and interpretive, inter, interpretive education. So all this that database uh, we have on the Eco Museum Tatasomba, we are going to work with a uh, Tim Looper. Tim Looper is uh, on a big platform who is in United States. And we are going to, to create like uh, a solution and digital solution to make education uh, to, uh, uh, to to children, mm, please uh, next slide. So uh, we, we we are going to work on the materials, on the technical, and uh, uh, also to work how to preserve this. So the way is uh, to 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 utilize uh, a virtual reality. To, to develop uh, uh, on mobile tools who can travel to go to, to the school, to go to, uh, to the university, and also to be on international platform where people around the world can, can watch and see uh, what is this uh, vernacular architecture and how we can work to preserve the technique uh, who is going to disappear because today is very difficult to build these houses but we are going to, to to mobilize the local community and work and this work we, we are associate the new techno technology uh, like camera uh, like uh, good photo 
uh, like database and take all the information and make a big database who can use to make uh, uh, the, the workshop in the school and the university. The next slide, please. So uh, the team, team, team looper will help us to make a, a three digital archive and uh, also make a modeling technical photogrammetry. And all these can, can use on uh, two possibility. The first possibility is to use this to go to the school and teach the children, they make the workshop to how, a, why it's important to preserve this heritage and how we can, uh, we can, we can, uh, how we can uh, trans, trans, make transmission uh, generation by generation to how to build these houses. And the second is we can use all this uh, uh, platform to, to make, uh, uh, to make uh, a virtual visit and get, uh, uh, get to, to make a local renovation in the site. I don't know if it's clear. We will use uh, the platform who we are going to to recreate to to the international visitor who have possibility to learn about this uh, heritage, and uh, uh, we can use the resource we we have to to make uh, to make a local activity with a local community like renovation, like a workshop with children. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Hey, merci beaucoup, Ibrahim. Merci. Thank, thank you so much for your presentation. So this is the last presentation of our competitions. Uh, as you see in the chat, please uh, change your name for the breakup rooms. Now we're going to explain the policy, the toolkit ideas. Okay, and I'm looking at my colleagues, uh, Rashmi Gajare and Daniel and Dani. Paulino, who are going to be presenting this very important part, which serves as, a, as an introduction to the discussions we are going to have in the breakup rooms. So Rashmi and Danny, the floor is yours. Yeah, hi. So uh, what I am going to talk about is where we create spaces for you to give us feedback. Up till now, it's been uh, you explaining your work. And uh, now we are going, I'm going to, Give you some idea about the IT policy and toolkit, um, the, the policies that we are um, using to create the toolkit, and then how you can give us feedback about what you think about that. Uh, my name is Rashmi Gazari. I'm a member of the policy committee for the transformational impacts of information technology theme. Um, this is a part of the Our World Heritage Initiative. Um, I'm going to talk about where we have been till now, what we have been doing till now, and where we hope to go. Next slide, please. Um, so the um, Our World Heritage, the larger initiative was formed by a group of citizens, um, civil society groups, professionals, scholars, uh, all of us concerned with the welfare of world heritage. The, the group came together with two main goals. Uh, that was, I mean, the first one is to protect and conserve both cultural and natural sites that have been designated by UNESCO for their global importance. And the second was to mobilize a global network to renew the World Heritage Convention. Next slide, please. Uh, so the, the transformational impacts of information technology is one of the 12 themes throughout this year of 2021. There's a different theme for every month where we host debates on key topics on world heritage. You can find more information on the main website about that. Um, the information technology theme has two main goals. The first one is to uh, build a robust global network of professionals, citizens, scholars, civil society organizations um, that are concerned about um, the heritage and that are ready to take action on this topic. The second one was to explore how information technologies can be used for monitoring and presenting world heritage sites uh, with a view to facilitate improvements in both these areas. Next, please. So the first Globinar 1.0 was in January um, this year, in case uh, you were there or uh, you weren't there. It was actually, it achieved one of our first goals. 
of building a robust global network of concerned actors because there were 900 registrants from 91 countries 125 panelists and 29 moderators so, and we heard a lot of um, interesting of uh, we got a lot of interesting feedback from those next slide please uh, so this is kind of what i just explained what we did in january and where we are going um do we have the slide about the policy team Michelle, are you right? Uh, so this is the IT policy team. Uh, you've heard from some of um, some of the people here. Christina, Lori are the co-chairs, and our members Mario, Haifa, Komil, Una, Carmelo, myself, Peace, Daniel, Nazi, and Dibai. Uh, out of these, uh, the members working on the toolkit right now are Haifa, Komil, Carmelo, myself, Daniel, Nazi. Okay, next. So what I mean, I've already spoken about the uh, the Globinar that was held in January, where we launched a global competition. And then every month we talk about, we have a different theme. The, the main deliverable of all these um, uh, webinars and uh, debates are creating reports where we basically introduce the theme. Uh, we, we present what we've heard from you, the feedback and the considerations that come up from the debates, how the contribution of uh, IT uh, will, will help solve some of those problems, and the next steps to advance the IT theme and achieve improvements. This, this is one of the deliverables for the IT theme. Next, please. Uh, so the Globinar 2.0, uh, right now, today we are focusing on one of our key uh, recommendations from the earlier uh, Globinars and webinars that was developing an information technology toolkit. And as we debate on this, and you'll hear more about this from Dani later, uh, we are. We want your feedback. So I'll present you uh, what we are thinking, and then you can uh, give your feedback during the breakout rooms and also later on Miro board. Um, there are many ways to give us uh, your opinion about this. So we will. Um, I mean, the the toolkit is basically to better equip site managers and local communities to understand, conserve, and monitor and present uh, the world heritage sites where where they come from. We are obviously looking for feedback from you, uh, specifically about the recommended tools and their characteristics. Why would you use a tool? Why would you not use a tool? So this is what uh, we hope uh, uh, you will tell us today. And um, today also we will be announcing the competition results in the closing ceremony. Next, please. Right, so this is an old uh, slide. Um, we have the capacity building and the data management and open source data. Um, these two are one breakout room, number one. Breakout room number two is tools in monitoring and interpretation. And the third one is uh, the Spanish language breakout room. So you can uh, join uh, if you put the number of the breakout rooms. One was capacity building and data management, two was tools and three was Spanish. In front of your name, before your name, rename yourself. Uh, you will be automatically sent to that room at the end of this presentation. Next, please. Right, and what, as I said, what we uh, hope to get from you is what characteristics are the most important when you decide to use a tool? And we would like that feedback from you. Next. Uh, for us, what we will do, I mean, what are we hoping to do after today's events? Uh, what's the point of all of this? Uh, so after the reporters come back to us from today's discussions, uh, we I have been uh, in uh, some of the sessions and we have got great feedback. So we will organize and analyze what we heard. Uh, then potentially, if, if um, we'll see if we can create a preliminary catalog of tools. Um, people are suggesting many tools to us, uh, apps, data sources, training opportunities, and then use the different characteristics that they came up with to describe them uh, to basically catalog all of this. Uh, I mean, you'll see what I mean further in the sessions. And thirdly, we will be working on the IT theme report, as I mentioned before. Hopefully, um, something will come up, come together in the next few months. Next, please. Right, and then beyond this year, like these after the 12 uh, thematic debates, what will we be doing? So there'll be a global report taking input from all of these themes uh, a large, larger report, which will uh, talk about all these issues. 
and then we will explore um, uh, possibilities for a larger digital platform a hub where um, initially there will be a simple catalog of all of these resources and eventually a more comprehensive toolkit that's that's the goal hopefully next thing and you have been listening very patiently to all of this policy um, thing so let's shake it up a bit and let's have a quick poll this is how the poll will look uh, there are seven characteristics we would like you to rank them in order of importance to you uh, i think the link will be there hopefully in the in the chat you if you click on um, the characteristic there will be arrows to move it up and down and then don't forget to submit it then Yeah, is there in the chat, and we'll see the results here right now. There we go. You can see people changing it. We'll give everybody a minute or so. to get in their responses looks like we had a tie for the first that's for the third and affordable and easy to operate that is Oh. Michelle Jo uh, who's operating this let me know when we are at the end of it Yep we just it's slowing down now so I think we can call it Thanks okay. everybody for your input and then we'll move on to the toolkit part Yeah thank you so much so affordable and easy to operate was the first then versatile and adaptable to different uh, needs and as you can see uh, how it goes uh, so thank you for this uh, now um, dani will discuss the toolkit concept for you thank you bye so hello everyone i'm daniel polin and i'm going to continue the presentation of this initiative focusing on our key recommendations which is to create a toolkit for information technology So our task force worked on the possibilities for this toolkit and we devoted all of breakout rooms today to discussions about the tools that might populate a preliminary version of this toolkit and which characteristics are the most important. So next slide please. So the vision for the IT toolkit is to create an an evergreen dynamic and user friendly digital platform that provides access to data information and tools for our world heritage stakeholders in order to support understanding conservation monitoring interpretation network and exchange of good practice for world heritage sites next slide please So this slide has a lot of information but in summary the long term concept would be to have an e platform that provide access to a multitude of sources including data planning tools networking opportunities tools to assist in monitoring interpretation and resources for capacity building and training some of this such as the gray areas here are further in the future than the others next slide please so in the the short term what we think might be achievable is a digital catalog of tools that could be useful for monitoring interpreting world historical sites and this could be organized into three groups already mentioned by Rashmi and further work on uh, in the breakout rooms which is capacity building and networking tools techniques and apps and open source data next slide so in summary our objective is to collect these apps data source and training opportunities 
compile them in an online catalog and organize them by characteristics and give access to the audience, such as site managers, uh, community and professionals. This will help to promote in innovative solutions and practice and apply ex existing concept to other nar narratives of World Heritage Sites. Next slide. Thus, what we want is something that is free, accessible, reliable, and serves a wide audience. Uh, next slide. Therefore, the key message here is that all of those three components, capacity building, open source data, and apps for monitoring and presentation would all work together. And they are all interlocking pieces of the bigger puzzle. Next slide. So potentially there is a wide ranging audience for this platform. Um, such as World Heritage Practices, uh, including site managers, government, other institutions, non-government organizations, technology partners, local residents, the academic community, business sector, such as tourism. In fact, any interested individual in World Heritage sites. Next slide. Next slide. So how today's discussion will contribute to the toolkit? Basically, we want um, we will have the three topics organized in the breakout rooms, plus the Spanish language room, which will be combining all the three topics. There will be discuss, discussions that the main characteristics for deciding which tools to choose and how the toolkit can be incorporated, can incorporate them. So next slide. To achieve that, each breakup rooms will receive a few guiding questions, a sample list of tool sources with links, and a sample list of characteristics to evaluate the tools. Uh, the panelists will potentially be adding other tools for your consideration. Uh, next slide. So now I will present uh, shortly how each breakup room is organized. So the first breakup room is a focus on networking and capacity building. And a few guide questions can be applied such as the ones here mentioned, uh, which are which of the samples of online training resources and tutorial have you used? Uh, would you recommend them? What are the advantage and challenge? And are there any other source available? And what do you think about these sources? Next slide. So for example, we can bring the international training course on disaster risk manager, uh, which is offered every year by the UNESCO Chair on Cultural Heritage and Historical Manager. And also during the breakout rooms, um, these examples will be expanded. So next slide. Um, then we give you a list of characteristics as the one mentioned here, and they may apply for the toolkit. And then you might decide of which one of the, those characteristics are more relevant to evaluating training courses. Next slide. Then the breakout room two will look at the tools and apps for monitoring interpretation. Again, which one of those have you used and how they are useful? So can you recommend the others that all can be discussed during the breakout rooms? Next slide, please. Also, for example, we present here the Google Street View for monitoring and the Kula platform for interpretation. And again, there will be, uh, we will give more examples during each breakup rooms. Next slide. So, um, as the first breakup rooms, we have also a list of suggestions for the top characteristics which um, can be evaluated apps and tools for monitoring interpretation. 
Uh, next slide. Then finally, the third breakout rooms will cover open source data. Again, asking you which samples you have used, um, which one are the most useful, and, and if you can suggest any other to us, that would be very helpful. Next slide. As a, an example for the data management and open source data, we have the BioPama reference information system, which is an open source data and um, is a web-based uh, information system for protect areas in 79 countries of the African, Caribbean, Pacific group of states. Next slide, please. Then you will recognize uh, the suggested characteristics and the ones you ranked in the pool question earlier. Next slide. So just to repeat, the policy team will review those, character, those discussions and inputs from today and try to organize a catalog of tools and example. Next slide. Um, and finally, we will prepare the term report for the transformation impacts of technology uh, contributing to write, uh, to expand our heritage report and look on how we can move towards some sort of e-platform as a long-term solution. Thank you. That's all of my presentation for today. Thank you.